The Honourable Member from Calgary, Nose Hill. Well, Mr. Speaker, the reality is that it was this government who fought tooth and nail for an extension of the Rainbow Railroad refugee program that was started under the former Harper Conservative government. And, at the meet, and all the while, they allowed countless people who are in upstate New York to illegally cross the border. That is the record of this government's broken immigration system. Mm -hmm. And if he wants to talk about queer youth or any Canadian, the reality is, is that this government's inflationary crisis is what is putting people out on the streets. They've broken Canada's immigration system. Will they allow for a carbon tax election to allow Conservatives to fix their mess. Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Speaker, immigration is key to economic growth of Canada. This country is full of incredible story of immigrants. One speaking right now of, of a country that has welcomed people from around the world. But the government has always taken a very responsible approach to immigration to make sure that Canada continues to grow. And that's exactly the kind of responsible approach we are demonstrating. The work we did to bring immigrants so that we can keep Canada moving forward during the pandemic and the work we're doing now so that we can keep up with pace of, of Canadian population growth, housing we need, and the infrastructure Canadians deserve. Oh. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Nose Hill. Yep. A responsible approach to immigration. The former immigration minister bragged about increasing uh, international student permits from about 400,000 to 500,000, knowing that shady universities were abusing these students and that these students were living under bridges in Toronto. That's the record of this government. This government, their responsible approach the member talks about, they dropped security clearance certificates from their own background checks for temporary uh, uh, residences. There's nothing responsible about this government. Will they allow for a carbon tax election so that con Conservatives can fix Canada's broken immigration Excellent. system? Bravo. The Honourable, Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Well, it's, it's, always, it's always rich to hear from Conservatives when they talk about fake colleges. I hope the member opposite is calling her Premier Daniel Smith to make sure that those fake colleges Colleges are not getting credentials, or I hope the Ontario members are calling Doug Ford to let them know that they should not be accrediting fake uh, colleges. On this side of the House, Speaker, we will always make sure that we are taking a responsible approach. Immigration is important for Canada. We did so during, during the pandemic, and moving forward, we are making sure that we make the re readjustment necessary so that Canadian population and economy grows at a responsible path. The Honourable Member for Mégantic Lérable. Mr. Speaker, I have the Prime Minister's immigration plan in front of me, the one he submitted yesterday to the House of Commons. What's inside of it? Nothing. A white page. After nine years, the Prime Minister hasn't only broken the immigration system, he forgot his plan, Mr. Speaker. After the Prime Minister's regrets are not credible, no more than his improvised, photocopied, back-of-a-napkin plan. Will the Prime Minister admit that he's pushed the immigration system to a breaking point, causing long-term damage to the housing market, to health care, and to jobs in Canada? Before I ask the Parliamentary Secretary to answer, I would just like to uh, give a warning to all members to please avoid uh, using to avoid using props and papers that uh, fall out of books the honorable parliamentary secretary to the minister of health mr speaker the new plan is a transition plan that directly meets the changing needs of our country that's what Canadians want, and that's what they've asked us to do. These actions are necessary to increase our prosperity and support uh, new arrivals and make sure that they can succeed as well. The Honourable Member for mégantic Lérable. Mr. Speaker, what do you call somebody who sets a house on fire, who watches it burn, and then when there's nothing left but the ashes, then calls the firefighters? Is that a hero or a pyromaniac? Well, Mr. Speaker, this is exactly what the Prime Minister's done with the support of the Bloc Québécois in immigration. He invited the world to come to Canada. He saw the cost of housing double. The cost of food is up, and when he saw the damage he caused, he said that he regrets it. Too little, too late, not credible. When will he call elections so that we can fix everything that he's broken? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, after the pandemic, we 
increased immigration levels to allow our economy and our businesses to succeed. Our post-pandemic measures reflected what Canada needed at the time. The new plan reflects what Canada needs today by recognizing demographic changes, and we will continue to support economic growth over the long term. Problem. Thank you. The Honourable Member uh, from Kelowna Lake Country. Mr. Speaker, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, and time is up. This Prime Minister has destroyed our immigration system through his and his minister's incompetence. He can't fix what he broke on immigration, housing, or anything else because he's busy fighting his own caucus. Now, the Prime Minister is admitting his policies have been totally incompetent, stating immigration has, quote, grown at a rate far beyond what Canada has been able to absorb, unquote. Will the Prime Minister admit he is destroying Canada's immigration system and accept his own personal failure? The Honourable Minister for, Crown, for Indigenous Services. Mr. Speaker, we've answered that question already in this House several times, but the real question for me today is how does that member feel about the anti-abortionist that she sits with every single day in her caucus, with a leader that won't march in pride with the LGBTQ community, with a leader who won't stand up for the rights of the most vulnerable in this community, with a leader that attacks the most vulnerable people in this community on a daily basis? How does that member sleep at night? The Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Mr. Speaker, Canada had one of the most well-respected and functioning immigration systems in the world before this Liberal government. Yep. And the current immigration minister even stated the growing population impacting housing is, quote, where we have a serious issue we need to address, unquote. The former immigration minister, now housing minister, stated the immigration system is, quote, really disconcerting. It's really a system that has gotten out of control, unquote. This is an admission of his own incompetence. Will the Prime Minister fire the former Immigration Minister, now Housing Minister, or if not, will the Housing Minister resign in disgrace? Good question. The Honourable Palmer, Secretary to the Leader of the Government to the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, I think the members opposite need to get a reality check. When the leader of the Conservative Party was a part of a government, a Conservative government, you know what they did in immigration? I was the critic when they actually froze, they froze the parents and grandparents, and then when that didn't resolve the problem, what did they do? They actually cancelled the program, saying you can't sponsor mom and dad to come here. When it came to overseas uh, immigrants coming to Canada, they actually hit the delete button, deleting hundreds of thousands of potential people being able to come to Canada because they couldn't deal with processing times. Don't lecture us on The Honourable Member from Kenora. After nine years of this NDP Liberal government, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, and time is up. The Prime Minister has destroyed our immigration th system through his incompetence, and he is too busy fighting his own caucus and clinging to power to be able to fix what he has broken. He has now admitted that his policies have failed, but he also took his former immigration minister and put him in charge of the housing crisis, Mr. Speaker. Instead, why doesn't the Prime Minister simply fire that minister for his incompetence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, what's shining through right now in this debate on immigration is the far-right Canadian Alliance Reform Party roots of the Conservative Party of Canada. You know, our government is proud of the fact that we've provided over 54,000 Afghan refugees with safe refuge here in Canada, and over 300,000 uh, Ukrainians have come here following uh, Putin's illegal war in Ukraine. And when my family fled uh, Soviet Hungary in the 1950s, Canada had their doors open to people who are arriving here to, to flee from violence mm -hmm. and persecution. Yeah. And I really fear that under a, a conservative government with this far-right xenophobic uh, immigration concept, families like my mom's would be th sent away. The Honourable Member from Kenora. Mr. Speaker, the member speaks of some of our history, and it's true that Canada had a 150-year consensus on immigration, but they have destroyed that. That's right. And if this government and if that Prime Minister were so sure of himself, they would not have admitted they have failed. But again, the same minister that was responsible for that has now been put in charge of housing, and that really hasn't gone much better, Mr. Speaker. Housing costs have doubled, and young Canadians have given up completely on their dream of home ownership. Everywhere that minister goes, incompetence follows. When will the Prime Minister just fire him? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. 
Uh, Speaker, we will always defend immigration and make sure that immigration remains an integral part of, of Canadian success story. But we all, Speaker, well, you know what else we will always defend? is a woman's freedom. Woman's freedom, a right to choose. And what I have not heard from any of those members from uh, across, from the Conservative benches, is an affirmation that they will also defend women's right to choose because now we know, hearing from one of the former members, that they have been plotting behind. They're trying to hide the fact that they want to take away women's right to choose. That is unacceptable and we will fight it every single day for all Canadians. Oh.